I'm muted. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> nothing like waking up in the morning and muting yourself <laughs> so let's try that again this is the thursday morning fundamentals uh, this is your host Hi, my name is kirsten franklin i am a first year tattooer out of western massachusetts um we here talk about fundamentals of tattooing and art and how the fundamentals of art relate to tattooing and um, we talk about terms, we go over exercises, we give you opportunities to ask questions on Zoom Live with me on one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we make it, the experience super fun and super personal, and that's the whole point of this. Um, and last week here, we did contrast and value, and um, <clears throat> we kind of picked that because to me, that's one of the most important uh, topics of fundamentals and we've been going through a lot of it really and I say this probably every time I try and pick a new topic that I really have a tough time choosing what I was going to do uh, I did say in my last class two weeks ago that I was not going to go into color right away and I was almost going to I was very very close I was actually making slides for it and I was like you know what no let's Let's go over like the basic, basic fundamentals, and then we'll do the sometimes why. Because like I mentioned in the last class, color theory is a fundamental, but it is only a fundamental secondary to value. So if you don't understand value to its fullest and aren't studying it to its fullest and really can't you know, grasp where all my light is supposed to go and all my shadows are supposed to go, you have no business learning color theory yet. Um, because all that's going to do is confuse you and it even may deter you away from color theory, which is not what I want. Um, I've been getting messages over and over again for people wanting me to talk about color theory because I love it so much. And even though I love it very much, uh, doesn't mean that it is an importance to our class. Uh, so I definitely want to make that noted and say that we will be talking about color theory at one point in time, uh, maybe in the future, maybe not in the future. But first, we are going to just really hone in on trying to get your brain to understand how to view the world around you in the artistic way. So we picked um, probably the subject that I am not the strongest in, which is okay. Um, we are going to be doing perspective this month. I am not the best, like I said, at perspective, but um, I did take these last two weeks to really go over terms and phrases and how to teach it and um, what are good examples, what are the fine definitions of it, fundamentals of it, all that fun stuff. Um, so feel free, stay tuned in. If you aren't too sure how to join into the Zoom, uh, we are also beaming out through the Reinventing the Tattoo app which is the holy grail of where I am doing my classes. So if you want to join any of them, you do have to have a Reinventing the Tattoo app um, account and you go right into events, watch show, and write in the comments section when it is time to do uh, the Zoom. I'll post it right in there, okay? Uh, but for the meantime, what I do is I kind of just take the you know half hour to 45 minutes to really go over stuff. And today I'm actually thinking that we're gonna go outside. So I may transfer myself into my cell cellular device and we're gonna go for a walk outside and look at the landscape around me. Um, with that being said, let's, let's get, get right into it, gang. All right. So what I wanna mention first is some books that you can go into or, or buy to read to learn perspective because in my opinion um I, in these last couple of weeks of trying to study perspective uh, i haven't found a lot of really in-depth videos on youtube um and if they are they talk about really like the basic fundamentals that i'm going to be talking about but they really don't go like in depth in depth with it um, if you're really into perspective and looking to get 
more in depth with it. <laughs> I have two books here that I bought. Um, one that I've been talking about nonstop. Um, but this one kind of deals with more thir- uh, th- three-point perspective, which is what we'll be talking about. Um, and so Dynamic Bible by Peter Hahn. Uh, every single person needs to get this book, not just for, you know, because I've been mentioning it 20 million times, but because it's a very reputable book, book and it does great things. Um, we will be talking about, where is it? Right in the beginning. Ba, 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 ba. Aha. Perspective, boxes in space. So boxes in space, I've been talking about this since the cube. And this is the greatest way, in my opinion, to get yourself comfortable with perspective by drawing boxes in different forms, different sizes, and obviously in perspective. (laughs) So we're going to definitely delve into this once again. Um, If you are, once again, first timer and this is your first class with me, and you have not seen boxes or cubes, my class on cubes, stop this class now and go watch cube before hopping into this class, okay? That is a request and a demand, okay? Because I'm going to be mentioning a lot of the same things that I was, um, and to understand the cube in different ways is your first step to understanding perspective in different ways. So if this is your first day in perspective, uh, stop this class right now and go right back to cube. Okay. Next book. Um, Next book. Perspective Made Easy by Ernest R. Norling. This book really is perspective made easy. Um, Pretty much teaches you how to look at things from eye level. Okay. Teaches you perpendicular lines, boxes in space, teaches you, you can see my bookmark, um, teaches you building perspective, everything, everything that you need to know as a basic fundamental is in this book, okay, and as I'm teaching this class, I'm going to rip through this whole book and try and relay as much information as I can from this book to your ears, so um, moving on, Usually what I do is I share my content here and we go into my notes that I've made for the week and we kind of talk about it. Last week I had, or not last week, sorry, two weeks ago, I had everybody do lollipops. Um, we were talking about contrast and different forms of contrast as far as in focus, out of focus, texture, non-texture, soft, hard, and how they vary with the eye when you look at it. So... Let's do that, shall we? And then I'll let everybody in here before I walk outside, because as soon as I walk outside, I can't let anybody in. So let's see. Hopefully this works. (gasps) I think it's working. All right. So this is my lollipop. this was, I did this a couple of days ago, but rough through, gets the basic idea around, um, got the super in focus lollipop up front, super out of focus lollipop in the back, got some swirly stuff in between, makes for a nice composition. Um, if I were to critique myself, I would say that it was very silly of me to put very cold colors up front and have such rough colors in, in the back. And these are the small points in time where I will talk about color. So here we go. Um, warm colors usually jump forward more than cold colors, but my personal taste is with cold colors. Um, but truthfully, before I started the background lollipop, I was doing the front lollipop and I was actually doing it warm and cool with the warm being on top. But since I put an even more warm palette in the background, that front lollipop is now extremely cold. So this is just one of those tricky things with color that you just have to 
mess around with, play around with, understand temperature, your hues, your values, all that fun stuff um, is relayed in this. So that's that's one of the critiques I would make. Well, I showed this to my boss in my studio and he was like, I really, really like it. But uh, doesn't it kind of look like a trash bag? <laughs> and I was like, hmm. And I flipped it upside down. And I was like, holy shit, that's my trash bag. <laughs> and I proceeded to laugh very hard. <laughs> And I was like, okay, cool. So uh, I guess another critique would be to have that bottom portion of that lollipop be more twisted rather than tied off. Um, gives it that real tight knit look to it. So it doesn't look like a trash bag on a stick. Um, that's why I love critiques like that because they're funny. And at the same time, they're very truthful. And uh, I don't think I would have been able to see it if I, you know, if I didn't see it like that. <laughs> Um, but overall, I'm actually kind of a fan of these. I had a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that was that. So I'm not going to lie. You know, perspective here. Let's see if I can flip this around. Okay. Perspective. So I took this definition right from the internet. This is how they define perspective. The art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression of their height, width, depth, and position in relation to each other when viewed from a particular point, a perspective drawing. And it had me thinking, right? The art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface isn't that what we do anyway? Isn't that just drawing a composition? You know what I mean? And I'm not downing the definition. I'm just making it more simplistic for you. You're, that's what you do. You draw an object on a two-dimensional surface, be it paper or wood or canvas, with the right impression of their height, width, and depth, and the position that they're in, be it whatever you're doing. And I think this correlates nice with Guy um or still life drawings that he was doing, because this is a nice way of explaining how you can do some still lifes. Because if you're drawing an object of any sort in front of you and you put it on paper, you're doing the exact th same thing as what they're defining as perspective. <laughs> Excuse me one second. Let me take a sip of my coffee. My allergies have been atrocious. Okay, moving on. These are the, the terms we're going to be going over. So today, what we're going to do and what my goal is for this class is to get everybody comfortable with their terms of perspective and understanding the perspective grid. That's it. So take a step back, take out your notebooks, take out your screenshot abilities and start screenshot and almost every slide because all we're pretty much gonna be going over is the terms like i said and then we're gonna go outside and i'll show you how you can view it because a camera is the best way to view the different points of perspective other than you with your own eyeballs okay so let me take out my apple pencil here so let's go right over this right uh vanishing point is a place where parallel lines appear to come together in the distance. So let me make sure I'm on the right layer, as always. If this is your first time, it's like my notion that I'm always on the wrong layer. But, you know, that's part of being an artist, right? Okay. Make sure I'm actually using a tool of sort. Okay, so obviously that's your vanishing point right here. Okay, so you see where these magenta E lines merge together so this would be you know if you were looking down your street right and you see that the end of their street kind of like starts to converge into one point that's exactly where your vanishing point is and that's a very 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 important term and helpful tool for when you're drawing perspective um horizon everybody i think knows horizon uh it's the line for which the sky meets the land or water below 
And we'll talk about in different landscapes how it's easy to see the horizon line in some cases and how it's difficult in some cases to see the horizon line. Be it if you're out in Illinois and there's not a single tree in sight, you can see the horizon line pretty clearly. It's a nice bend and separation, just like how I was talking about separation between your lights and your darks via that Terminator line. That's what that horizon line is, okay? That horizon line is that separation between sky and ground, okay? And uh, this is where we kind of get into a little bit more complicated terms, okay? Or, th okay, <laughs> let me stop myself. <laughs> if I cannot pronounce this word, please don't come at me. <laughs> I can't read very well out loud. Okay, if you guys know Bill Burr, I'm a very much spitting image. Okay, orthogonal lines. Okay, tell me if I said that right. Are lines which are directed to a vanishing point. The parallel lines of a railroad tracks, for example, the word orthogonal actually means right angle. It refers to right angles formed by lines such as the corner of a cube shown in perspective. Wow, that's a hefty uh, term. Well, I got that's those magenta lines right there. Once again, as they describe the lines of railroad tracks, that's the easiest way to explain that because it has those right angles that they were talking about because they have those, you know, railroad lines. And look what it's forming it's forming a right angle. See? And you're already starting to form a grid here, which we'll get to in, in a little bit. And I just want to do something funny real quick, just to kind of point out how this world kind of works and how we are going to go way back to when I talked about the golden ratio, right? I'm going to be funny. Ready? Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, man. I just sometimes when life gives you lemons. <laughs> All you got to do is make lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not quite sure what I'm referring to back in, you can stop this right now and watch that golden ratio video. Uh, but in the golden ratio, we talked about how it derives from one single point. Okay. It's the grand old proportion. Okay. It's the way that proportions are made. But the way that I see it is that it's the way that life itself makes its proportions, as weird as it, you know, as that states. And it all derives from the star, which makes triangles. Okay. And that's how the world is divided by these diagonals, which then make triangles. Okay. And this is a perfect example, right? Derives from that one vanishing point, yet you can equally break these into many triangles and you can continue to do so. You can just sit here, make triangles all day long, whatever, man. I'll just sit here and live my life in triangle land. That's cool. And I know right now that there's at least one of you laughing very hard right now. <laughs> so continuing on, that was my spiel on how the universe is always connected to artists too. But let's move on. Uh, the ground plane. Okay, so the ground plane is that those green little slashes on the sides of the orthogonal lines. Uh, the ground plane is the horizontal surface below the horizon. It can be land or water, and the image below the ground plane is level. If it were sloped or hilly, the vanishing point created by the path's parallel lines or the orthogonal lines may not rest on the horizon. It may appear as if it's on an inclined plane. Neat. <laughs> so your ground plane pretty self-explanatory uh anything that's at, like ground level uh anything below your horizon so let's just for for fun understanding for fundamental understanding let's call your her horizon right that's your terminator line let's call everything above the terminator line or the horizon line light and everything below the horizon line you're dark so your ground plane is your dark, right? And your ground plane is everything 
that's in the dark family. Think of Mufasa, right? He's like, everything the light touches is yours. And then Simba's like, what about that part over there with the elephant skulls? He's like, don't touch that. That's the ground plane, okay? That's everything that you see, that you, the objects that they sit on, the compositions you need to make rely on that ground plane. Do not disrespect that. Do not be putting plants in your above your horizon line in your light that's not good learning these terms is so that you are now well aware and can go out and not make these simple mistakes okay <sighs> continuing on oh gosh we just went over this but let's go over it again because it's very 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 important and one of the first things you look for when you're drawing perspective and that's how you define what perspective it is. So your vanishing point where all lines converge. So simplest question that everybody can answer. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer. Where is your vanishing point? I'm not going to wait long because it's literally, it's right in front of your face. It's right here. Look at it. Look at this little tiny window that is being made for you. Look at that. That's beautiful. There it is. And then, here we go. Your orthogonal lines. Everything down here is your round plane. Here's your horizon line. And then above it is light. Okay. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Not too difficult yet. Our brains aren't squeezing with pressure, right? Continuing on, one point perspective. This is when we can start to get a little confused, okay? One point perspective is the way that a lot of people start drawing, okay? You see kids, they draw like their house, tree, maybe mom and dad outside, all in pretty much one one point perspective, okay? That's with one vanishing point, okay? One point, one vanishing point. That's what it means, okay? And each of these, you should be able to tell where that vanishing line is. Now, the top two examples are much easier to see than the bottom one. Well, here, where is that nice, easy, little tiny square that's in each of these that makes it real simple for us? Well, it's not always that case. Think about a cityscape, right? Think about New York City. Think about how busy that is. And if you want to look down the street and try and find a vanishing point, it's almost impossible because there's so much composition going on. There's so many objects in the way that even coming up with a horizon line is difficult. So go back to your fundamentals. What is the vanishing point? It's where all lines converge, okay? Usually it's dead center in your composition, right? So let's say here, I'm gonna do the triangle thing again, okay? So those are orthogonal lines. We can tell because it makes this right angle that's right here. That's exactly what they mentioned. When they when terms give you secondary, like uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? It's like secondary notion to how to define that term, use it. Okay. They said right in the definition, right in the term, let's go back. Orthogonal lines. The word orthogonal means actually means right angle. It's in the definition, right angle. So what are you looking for when you're trying to find the road that leads to your vanishing point? You're looking for that right angle. And lucky for us, somebody made a nice carpet that forms into that right angle. Here it is again, right with the edge of the bed. Here it is again with, I don't know what these are, sheets. And then the pillows. And then there we go. And if we took this away, oh, I drew right on it, of course I did. But if we were to take it away, you would see that they would form nice right angles that lead right to our vanishing point. 
Okay. This is how I want your brains to understand things. But why, Kier? Not a lot of people understand these terms. And a lot of people are successful without even knowing these terms. Yes, you're correct. Absolutely, you're correct. But the point of this is, so that way I can teach you these terms. So that way you can better have more tools on your belt. And not going to lie, what happens if, let's say, you're in a really difficult landscape, be it New York City, and there's so much chaos going on, and you're trying to do a really nice composition of a landscape. Let's say you see a really pretty, I don't know, cab, okay, and it's down the block away, and you have a really nice shot, nice viewfinder, right, and you want to draw it, but you can't because you can't find that vanishing point because you don't know how to define it. You don't know how to find it. Then you're like, oh, man, I really wish I was able to draw that. And then it lowers your confidence and then starts a snowball effect of just negativity. This way, you know your terms and you're like, all right, where's my right angles? Let's find them. Let's sit back for a second. Let's get an eye level. Let's find it. There it is. Okay. So this way you won't need me eventually. And you can go off and be like, I can draw whatever. I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm in a different mode today. Don't mind me. I'm just being very silly. Um, but that's just that's just my whole point with it. And I think I mentioned that almost every single class that I just want you guys to rely on yourselves. You are your only hope, just like Star Wars. You are the Obi-Wan of art. <laughs> so continuing on. And this right now is just the beginning of how to define these one point, two point, three point perspectives. And that's just in the landscape perspective. OK, we're really going to go over the matrix field of events in just a second. OK, two point perspective, two vanishing points. OK, this is very, very common for uh, street view. OK. Uh, I'm going to mention New York City a lot, but it's it's just a very busy area. And honestly, cityscapes, just like boxes in space, like I've talked about before, they they basically paint the perspective grid for you. OK, so two vanishing points. Right. So that's when you can see two sides of your cube. Right. I already marked it here in green the left and right hand side. So once again, what are we looking for? We're looking where all points converge, okay? Making our right angles. And then this way, and then you may ask yourself, you know, where is this horizon line? Okay, so the vanishing point is kind of behind this building that's right here, but it's still there. So I kind of snuck it right next to it, but you could technically bring it to over here. So the horizon line would be directly the line that meets the both of them, okay? Which you can kind of tell here that if that's the horizon line, that's where your eye is looking, right? And we'll get over that in a second with three-point perspective, which in my opinion is the toughest perspective to learn as a fundamental. So I'm going to teach you three-point perspective, but we're really not going to be delving into it too much because it's, it's a very advanced one. Um, these first two are really fundamental after fundamental. So your horizon line lies right there. And your vanishing points are right at the edges. And you see how far away they are? You don't want your vanishing points to be too close together because then that's a little confusing and you might as well just make it a one point perspective. That doesn't really exist. They're usually on quite opposite ends of the spectrum. Okay. Three point perspective. Now we're adding an up and down motion. Okay. This is very common in new school. New school artists really know how and I appreciate and respect them to the fullest. They know how to play with perspective. 
they can contort something to like be tipped forward to have like a downward angle upward angle bend it the proportion right in the middle be it if they're making a pencil and still make it work okay they're playing with this three-point perspective okay and there's technically two versions right we have one version the high horizon three vanishing points bird's eye view everybody knows what that is when they say bird's eye view it's looking above something which means that your horizon line is all the way the heck up here. Of course, I'm on the wrong layer. All the way the heck up here. Because you see where your points are ending? It's where all the lines converge. So that's where your horizon line is. So you see how depending on your height and where you're looking, that horizon line is going to change. Same thing with down below, right? Three vanishing points, low horizon, worm's eye view. Okay. These are how you look at the world and take notes on what's happening because you know these terms. So if you're going out to a mountain, right, you climbed a giant mountain. And let's say you, this is right after you took Renee Little's plain air watercolor landscaping seminar. Okay. And you're up there and you're like, wow, this is really beautiful. And I really want to showcase this. Start defining it right away. How many vantage points do I have? Where's my horizon line? Is this a bird's eye view or a worm's eye view? Okay. Start to dissect your environment. Okay. <clears throat> and as for here, we can see right once again, the horizon line right down below, almost the bottom of the page, okay? But I want to point out, you know, we've been talking about these vanishing points of one after the other, and people are probably asking, well, where's that third vanishing point, okay? We have, I'm going to switch to a different color. I always like to use red or green. I have one, two, and I have this third arrow here. Okay, so we're going to ignore the left one for a second. Let's go to this right one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to get everybody's eyes focused on it. Do you see these grid lines that are right here? Okay, what do you think they lead to? A vanishing point. Okay, so what, what is that going to then lead to <clears throat> we have a vanishing point all the way the heck up here because this is coming down and guess what these are let me let me make that angle for you does anybody know what that is see if you had, if you guys were in here you'd be raising your hands but orthogonal lines those are our right angles. There's our converging railroad-esque lines. And they lead right to the top. This is the easiest example that I could find. <clears throat> Where this one is a little more difficult because there's multiple subjects or multiple buildings in this, but the and it's not as contorted as this one, but the rule still applies. Okay. If you had your perspective lines, right? It doesn't need to be contoured to still have a vanishing point. Okay. I would call our vanishing point up here. Okay. And before we even get to perspective grid, I hope you are understanding what I'm doing. Okay. I'm deriving my line straight from my vanishing point because that's all I'm focused on, right? And that's the most important thing in perspective or one of the most important things in perspective because that's when my eyes are seeing the contour or crescendo happen from that railroad, road, cityscape, landscape, farm, barn, fan in front of me, 
that all comes from that one vanishing point. Where is my eye leading to? Okay. Okay. Drugs are bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do this for a little more. One point perspective. There's nothing in this room. But it still follows the same rules. Still has everything. Everybody's seen this before too, right? Everybody saw the movie Matrix, right? <laughs> mm. But let's make this even more simpler for you, right? Why draw this before anything else? Why focus on this before anything else? Well, simple answer. This is your foundation. Remember when I talked about the foundation in the basic shapes, be it the sphere, cone, cube, cylinder? This is the foundation of perspective. Do you think that some, I mean, not going to lie, some artists do for Peter Hahn or Karl Kopinski. We do do this. But do you think that artists... Just sit down, take out a notebook, and just draw a full landscape in perfect perspective without any perspective grid? I say, hey, nay, especially if you're not in this, you know, fundamentals class. You should be focusing on this one thing, your perspective grid. And that's, I just spent the last half hour teaching you how to define your grid so that you can easily make it. And I'm gonna teach you how to draw it out. So this is your one point perspective, all of your vanishing points. Once again, here's your horizon line. And although there aren't like some severe contorting lines, they still have that right angle, which to me is the most important part of that definition. Be it orthogonal means right angles. So to me, that's most important to look for are that those clean right angles, which is what this is. They never said that it con has to contour. I don't know if I'm using the right word, but it's, it's going to be the right word today. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kier, just do the thing. Okay, so two-point perspective. Okay, is it starting to look familiar? Is it starting to look fun? Is it starting to look great? Huh? We got two point perspective. We got two vanishing points. Once again, those vanishing points are now defined for you. But look where, once again, all of those lines, those crazy, like million lines that are in this, where are they all deriving from? Your two vanishing points. Ain't that the bee's knees? And then from here, let's see if I can do it. You go in here, right? Let's just pick this one. And you just go right in, buddy. There's my house. There it is. Oh my God, it looks just like it. So crazy. Oh my gosh, I could hop right in right now. Here's my street. Maybe a heckin' car parked out front. Maybe a heckin' tree. That's a horrible tree. I'm making a landscape. And it's deriving from both vanishing points and to right angles. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm just being repetitive, but I just wanted to get like seeped into your brain. <laughs> I want it to like merge in there. And I want it to just be like, I'm so sick of hearing vanishing point. Well, now you, you know, you'll know what it is. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, three point perspective. Uh, so this is from ladies, anybody, Bueller, know what this is? Worm's eye view. <laughs> 
worm's eye view. This is worm's eye view. How do I know this is worm's eye view? Because the horizon line is right on the bottom. That means I'm like sitting on the floor, almost laying down, looking up at an object. Okay. Once again, we can make that building. Right. Maybe. Dealer. Maybe. Fry. Sorry. I love that movie. <laughs> Here comes my street. And then we can start making how like windows and shit. That's the wrong one. That's a terrible example, but you get the gist. Okay. To get your structuralization down, this is how it needs to be. Well, here, how the heck are we going to draw this? It's insane. There's so many lines. It's so overwhelming. How are we going to do this? Well, let's get right into that, shall we? Let's do the simplest perspective here Let's to, to do this grid, be it two-point perspective, okay? So... It's not going to be perfect, no, but bear with me here. So we have our line. That's our horizon line, right? Plain and simple, first step, down. Two vanishing points. Let's just pick two spots, opposite ends here. Then... <clears throat> Then we start to draw our lines in. Everything deriving from this one point. <clears throat> and there's a great video by the great David Finch on how to draw a good perspective grid. And this is kind of like deriving from that. I watched that video a long time ago, um, but it's pretty simplistic, the method, okay? You, do you want to use a ruler? Yes, okay, yes. Do you want to be sitting on a flat surface when doing this? Yes. Okay, if you're really wanting to get a good composition down, this is your project, you got a deadline on this, do it right. I'm just going to do it just to show you how it goes down. Okay, so bear with me. So what I'm actually going to do is make my horizon line a different color so that we don't get lost in where that is. Okay. All right, so all we do is just take from one end and start to do like a circular motion with diagonal lines. And you go all the way around. But make sure that if you're going up or diagonally up with your lines, that you remain above that horizon line or in our light form, okay? And if you're going down, you're gonna be facing downward. Okay, now that we got that one kind of established, we can kind of see already that it's kind of like start to like converge or get smaller, hasn't changed. We then do the same thing to the other side or other vanishing point, do the same thing. Start from one end and you just go up. I kind of have my microphone in the way. So if I'm not drawing perfectly straight lines, that's kind of why.
And that's how that's done. Okay. There it is. It's the exact perspective line or, you know, two point perspective that I was shown. This is a more simplified version. The other one had like a million tiny lines in it. But this is the simplified version. And you can go ahead and make a composition just from this. You can go on another layer. Once again, start coming in here with my house. Same house. Okay, there it is. Maybe like an alleyway. Telephone pole. Maybe another building, this one can be taller. See how I'm using the perspective lines to my advantage? Those windows are not correct. It's hard to keep consistent with your perspective lines here, but they're here to help you. And you will start to see, because I'm using my perspective lines to a T, that it's starting to make a landscape, all right? Now, let's say we had another street that goes down this way, had some lines. Okay, maybe this is like another entrance or something. You go in and do another building. See, maybe make a person. Okay. You understand what kind of is happening here? I hope me doing this solidified the importance of those vanishing points. Like this was like zero thought in mind. So imagine trying to draw buildings without that perspective grid in it first. It's a little complicating. You got to guess where everything is. And uh, some of your perspective would be off. It's just, you're going to make yourself upset. Me showing you this perspective grid is the first step to, un to making great landscapes and compositions. And this can be used in everything. It doesn't have to be landscapes. New school artists, once again, I would not, I mean, you know, I'm sure some of them just have gone from the graffiti stage of life into this one, but hearsay, you could use three point perspective to draw whatever you wanna draw on there and have it fit those perspective lines. OK, <clears throat> this is just a nice tool for everybody to use. OK, <gasps> boxes in space. Gosh, I love this. As you could tell today, I <sighs> talked a lot, but, but uh, I drew a lot of boxes whether they be more rectangular boxes, smaller boxes, bigger boxes, because what are buildings mostly? Boxes, okay? So if you are, once again, unfamiliar with making boxes, do not think that you can go out here today and do a great landscape without learning what a box is and why it's important. First step to doing that, and a great you know, exercise for doing that is Boxes in Space by Peter Hunt, okay? Um, this was a super silly mock-up of it at two in the morning this morning. Um, but it shows exactly what I want to show. See those really tiny boxes all the way on the right-hand side and see how they get slowly bigger and bigger and bigger and they follow a direction. The more you do this exercise, and it, to me, it's a very fun exercise. The more you do this exercise, the more you can just whip out boxes like no problem in whatever perspective, okay? Be it like this. Now, these are both two-point perspective, which is most common 
for boxes because with boxes, 95% of the time you're seeing two sides. Okay. Because if you if you push it to that one side, it may look like a square or rectangle. Or if you were doing in one point perspective, you do, you know, converging this way. Because where is your orthogonal lines traveling to? They're traveling this way. Where's your vanishing point? Somewhere over here. Where's your horizon line? Well, the box is sitting on the horizon line, so it's got to be somewhere here. Are we understanding? Are we getting it? Importance of terms and studying these things. The difference between studying and doing actual projects and compositions. There's a fine difference. And it took me many, many years to understand that I need to practice just as much as I'm drawing these projects that I'm doing. And you can simply do it just by sitting on the couch. You can do boxes in space over and over and over and over again, just simply by sitting on the couch. Okay. So before I have everybody hop on, I'm going to go over, just in case, if you really don't want to go to that boxes one, I'm going to go over boxes in space real quick. <clears throat> every single side note, every single time I do a class, I always don't think I have enough content. And here we are, like almost an hour in. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're going to apply our line of action. And for those who don't remember, our line of action is the direction in which our composition is flowing. Okay. And just for time's sake, let's let's do something like that. Okay. That's our line of action. That's the direction the boxes are going to be going in. Okay. So we start off here with a little. Hold on. With a little itty bitty box. And in, in whatever perspective, just a little itty bitty box. I can draw a box, Jesus. Okay, then we pick another section, kind of like middle. We draw a bigger box. Okay, then all the way at the end, big ass box. Maybe one not that big, it's a little big. Okay, so they're already starting to make a movement. You're leaving yourself breadcrumbs for once again, I'm saying this. And then what do you do after that? You just fill it in. Fill in the fill in the boxes. Keep the crescendo going. So I'm going to do this very quickly just so everybody can hop on. You do boxes in any sort of form, any length, any size. These are really bad boxes, but that's fine. And as you start to go down the line, your boxes start to get gradually bigger. And what you're doing is you're training your brain to understand perspective. Because what are boxes? Boxes are following that perspective grid to a T, to a T. Literally just retracing those perspective lines. Like as I did in that two points perspective drawing that I did, that looked like a two-year-old did it. Okay. And once again, this is a very simplistic version, right? You can have boxes like touching each other, going in one of each other. That way you can start to establish line weight and you can shade one side to give it lighting, have fun with it. And then from that point, how do you think comic book artists make cityscapes? It's literally just boxes in space. They just put windows and doors and call it a day. Okay. So then we 
come in here, finish this up here. And we got boxes in space. Kind of makes sense. And we can make like maybe like really itty bitty ones just to let the viewer know that really it's. See? There's one that needs to be right here. It's bothering me. Oh, that's a little big. Well, heck, look at that. It's boxes in space, y'all. Took me, what, two minutes? Not even? <laughs> so have fun with these. All right. <clears throat> Last but not least, let's start getting people in here. Um, these are some examples. This is mostly one point perspective. I have this railroad one that I really liked. It's a great example. And at the same time, this one technically, I mean, you could say it's two point perspective because they have two vanishing points here and here because of this building. So we could technically call this two-point perspective, but this solidifies that New York City street uh, horizon line difficulty that we could be seeing because with all this stuff that's right here, it's like, oh, where's my horizon line? Is it like up here? Is it down here? Is it up here? Well, okay, if you're questioning that, Go to your other terms that I've been explaining. Once again, let's do this. Where's our vanishing point? Where are those orthogonal lines? Where are our right angles? Because where's that vanishing point sit on? Horizon line. And I picked this image because look how funny it is. This little arrow is like, come on, man. Like it's right over here. <laughs> so we got our orthogonal lines here. And yes, technically, technically, we got one right there. So our horizon line would sit in this region. And it doesn't matter if, you know, if there's stuff in the way, there's people in the way, there's things you can still find that horizon line. Same thing with the bottom left. Where's our vanishing point, right? This one's simple. It's a little more, let's make it a little more. Oh my God, look, that dude's head is our vanishing point. That's so funny. So where's our horizon line? Whoop, whoop. Ain't that funny? And as I'm defining, I'm quickly just adding per, an, a perspective grid. Look how these proportions lay. Ain't that funny? I just love it. It's great. This is this is why you learn terms, everybody. This is why you get in depth with your fundamentals. So that way, when you walk outside, you'd be like, there it is. There's, there's all talking to lines. And your friends are like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, it's the right angle. <laughs> this is the whole point of this. This is what makes art fun is that you are able to see things like this where everybody else is like, oh, it's a cool city landscape. It's very pleasing to the eye. But you as an artist understand why it's pleasing to the eye. It's because of the orthogonal lines. Because... <laughs> All right, that's enough of my ranting. Let's get everybody in here into the Zoom. Um, I did not think I was going to have as much fun <laughs> with this subject, but it's it's very interesting. It's a very interesting subject. It's very uh, fun. I love it. I can't wait to do more. Um, and I don't ask what the next couple days or not because next couple of days, next couple of sessions are going to be because truthfully, no idea. 
it took me quite some time to really come up with this one. I think we may just go more in depth with 1.2 point, three point, but honestly, like you, you kind of know it. I kind of went over all of it. Um, so maybe you guys can, can let me know what the, uh, what you'd like to see. All right, the Zoom link is up for you to see, for you to beam in. And I'm gonna give everybody a couple minutes before I walk outside. I may not necessarily draw, um, but I do just wanna walk around my neighborhood, maybe show you guys some different vanishing points, different horizon lines, bird's eye view, worm's eye view, I'll lay on the ground. Um, the phone is the best way to do this. So, with that being said, or it'll just be me by myself. Oh. All right. So let's see here. I'm gonna give it two minutes to see if anybody will join me in today. If not, we'll take a nice little walk around my neighborhood. Um, I see here. I'm gonna get my get my phone in here so that way we can go outside. And truthfully, if I was if I was teaching a perspective class, I would go outside. No matter the weather. Let's see here. All right, let's get that in. All right, I have my handy dandy sketchbook. This thing is the bee's knees. Uh, it was gifted from me gifted to me from a great, great friend who is the absolute best. Um, so let's get myself in here. It's a great sketchbook. It's got a nice tooth on it. So that way, let me see, let's, let's stop screen sharing for a moment. There we go. Hello. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Got it, got it. Let's make me the host, just in case if somebody joins in while I'm in this. And then what I'm gonna do is, let's see. Attach this thing. You get to see here in action, trying to, understand uh recording in progress trying to figure, trying out, to figure out technology, out technology. Ah! there we go all right so let's see here let's log off of this one and go on my phone let's All right. I hope everybody can hear me. So, let's see. What a day thing. and look around. Right. Got all my materials and uh, my class with Renee Little made it very clear to be careful where you walk. Uh, make sure you understand your environment. So let's see here. Let's, let's go outside, shall we? Oh, I can't. Napping. Let's go for a Go for a walk. It's actually quite warm outside. 
All right, let's flip this camera forward, shall we? How do I do that? Oh, this. There it is. Okay, cool. Let's go for a walk. We got the handy dandy trash guys out here. All right. <laughs> Stuff for a second just to get past this trash as a little noisy. All right, so we're outside this is my neighborhood here. And as you can tell, probably already, we got some nice orthogonal lines. We got a little poo poo barking away. They're probably going to come say hi. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. He's like, you're in my yard. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. So we have, we're coming up on a street now. So this would be a good two point perspective understanding. And streets are a great way to view this, right? So let's just say, right, this right here is our composition, right? What you're seeing is our viewfinder right here, okay? So there's our horizon line right there. Okay, where are our orthogonal lines? They're coming right here, right here, also this way. Okay, and that way you can have also some perspective lines coming up here because of those light poles. See these lines, these, whatchamacallit, electrical lines, power lines? They're helping make our grid for us. So you see these comes out here in the neighborhood and you use that to your advantage. Of box on the ground, but I will. It's just a dissect. I say go through your just All right, let's take this very Massachusetts driveway, okay? And we're gonna cover, cover the license plate. Okay, so you see that we have, also, side note, this is in every single Massachusetts driveway. Hands up if you live in Massachusetts and you got a clover in your driveway. Anyway, so you see this first person perspective here. My finger is on his license plate and also on the horizon line. OK, and you see that orthogonal lines, these images are actually leading right to it. So this would make a pretty cool composition for that fact. Right. Same thing with down here. Let's go down here. I kind of like this tree. Let's go to this tree. What we can see as well, right, as we're starting to walk towards stuff, that horizon line stays right here as stuff is coming forward. 
So think of life as just a giant perspective grid. And we're dissecting that perspective grid when we choose our compositions. And I can, the only time I can really show bird's eye view because I'm five feet is, you can show it right on top of here, right? If I'm standing above, right? My horizon line would be all the way the heck up here still. That way I can draw the tops of these trash barrels. Same thing with bird's eye view. If I got all, or no, sorry, worm's eye view. If I got all the way down here, but tilting my camera all the way up. Although you don't have a definitive horizon line, you still have some vanishing points to go off of, be it the top or bottom. Let's go this way again. My neighborhood's very intersecting. But this is the, why, you know, going out is great and, and going on a walk, drawing your landscape, drawing your environment. Like this house that's right here is very pleasing to me. I like all those diagonals. So I could definitely sit down or, you know, take five, 10 minutes just to go in my sketchbook and really start to draw it out. And it doesn't even have to be street view, right? So let's let's take this house over here, for example. Ooh. Okay. One point perspective, right? One vanishing point. Okay, if I really want to draw those pumpkins, right? Have one horizon line here, draw those little pumpkins, orthogonal lines, ground plane, skylight. Same thing. So take that in, in, into account. This is not just for landscapes. This is for overall composition. Overall everything. The sun is beating on my face right now. <laughs> Massachusetts is very weird. It's like we're going to be 30 degrees one day and then 78 degrees the next day. It's very, very confusing. But I hope through this class, you're understanding the, the importance of this fundamental and why it is a fundamental. When I took Plain Air, a seminar by Renee Little up at Paradise BYOB, she made it very clear as to the importance of drawing landscapes. Even though she was teaching us watercolor landscapes, it still works. And take and once again take this into account for this not being just for landscapes. Let's go over to this fire hydrant that's over here. And and let's let's say I wanted to draw it. It's a nice fire hydrant, best fire hydrant I've ever seen. Depending on the on the height, length, and width that I want to do for it, all depends. So like up here, right? You can have a vanishing point be this top point and just drag your perspective grid down. Okay. And then just start to close off your base shape, another base shape, base shape, and then start to doodle it in. You're making constructive decisions. You're making decisions that are going to lead you right into the right direction and you're not going to be guessing anymore that's the whole point of fundamentals to have the confidence enough to to just go to not need reference and not be like what does a fire hydrant look like you know do the same thing with flowers right if i walked over to a flower and i said these are beautiful Okay, and I wanted to get a good composition. Stand back from them. Stand back. Stand all the way back. See, okay, horizon line's up here, but if I wanted to close in on just this pot of flowers, right, 
You can use your vanishing point to detect. But next time you go on a walk in your neighborhood, feel free to do this. This is the whole point of it all. And it could be as simply as something as, you know, steps, stairs, anything down the street. They all have the same fundamental terms, lines, ground plane, light, everything like that. Let me flip my camera around here. That way I can go back into the house here. But before the weather gets too bad for those who live in the you know, cold climates. See if anybody else wants to join in. <laughs> right very informative um a lot going on so nobody wants to join in today that's okay understandable uh so with that being said i guess we'll just do our closing now so let me switch Give me one second. All right, we're back. <laughs> so that was a nice little walk. We understood our differences there. Understood why walking around in our environment is important why dissecting our environment is important and how you can use those terms to really dissect any composition that you have. And not to go back to this wonderful book, but Peter Hahn definitely goes into that whole thing, right? Let's see here. He has, let's do a more simplistic one here. Let's do his cars. Okay, so you see, he makes a perspective grid to draw a car. Why? Because cars are in two point perspective most of the time, unless you're looking at them head on. But this is one of the most pleasing ways to look at cars is in this two point perspective. And now that I say two point perspective, you're understanding exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, another one, once again. Right here. What is he? What is that? What is that word right there? Eye level line. That's your horizon. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what he's doing with it? Making perspective. So he even has a notation right here about it. It says curving and skewing the perspective will help push the dynamic action or camera of the subject matter. So think of your eyes as the camera. That's what it is. So your eyes are the camera for your composition that you're gonna translate into your two-dimensional object as the definition states, okay? One more. We go. Now, this is where he gets crazy. And this is more for dynamicism, which is very advanced. This is four and five point perspective, which means what do you think that means? Four or five points of vanishing. Now, I'm not going to get into this, not even a little bit. 
you want to learn more about it, get this book. Okay. But this is the whole point of perspective is a grid to help you draw your composition. Remember in, in, in those coloring books, when you're a kid, they had that grid and they're like, copy this image over as best you can. Why do they think they did that? Because that's where it all falls from. The grid, the matrix grid. Anyway, I'm gonna buy this book. That's the website, subrani.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. That being said, I talked way too much about perspective. Let's do our closing statement here. You guys are great. Uh, thank you so much for joining the Thursday morning fundamentals. And uh, this is your host, Kier. I'm glad we went on a walk today, learned some stuff, did some things. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you to Reinventing the Tattoo. This is where we're beaming out from officially. And uh, this is the app that has literally changed my entire lifestyle and gave me a lot of confidence. And I've met amazing people from it. So I, hand to God, love Reinventing the Tattoo. Everybody in it, Guy Atchison, Gabe, Lauren, um, <clears throat> Kyle, and all the affiliates that have been helping making this possible. Thank you to the horsemen every single day for giving me confidence, for taking charge on me, for giving me a chance, and for having the same confidence that I'm now instilled with now. Um, I love you guys very much, and I can't wait to see you in February. With that being said, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Frankie Says Things. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any other topics that you want to hear from me, you can also follow me on Reinventing the Tattoo at Frankie Tattoos Things. Um, I will be here next Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And you can also watch me and join in and draw. Oh my God, I burp. <laughs> at Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time for the Monday Morning Drawing Group. That's not a class. We just literally sit there and draw and I talk nonsense. So if you have any color questions or you want me to talk more about color, like I've been getting tons of messages for, that's the place to do it. Um, this is a little more constructed. This is my baby. So this is a little bit more um, structuralized, as I said. So feel free to ask me any questions you have there. I'd love to talk about it, get it one-on-one -on -one with you, maybe join in on a Zoom with you and get more into it. Um, other than that, everybody have a wonderful day. Bless all your hearts. <laughs> I'm going to go tattoo. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye.